Hello, welcome, good to see ya, glad you're with us. My name is Ryan, this is Wait and See. I have got with me Casey, no name, no middle name, Green. Still not close. I'm gonna figure this totally out. Totally middle name. We only have so many episodes left to film. We might have to keep filming until I can get it right. Charles, if anybody has any ideas on what Casey's middle name might be, drop them in the comments below. Super excited to be back with you today. We're going to crack this nut sooner or later, but we have a really awesome topic to go through today. I'm not even really sure where this is going to go, but we want to talk about the top seven, what the heck just happened moments on our health journey. We've been trekking towards losing 100 pounds and beyond, both Casey and I, trying to change how we think, how it is that we act all sorts of things to take control and show up as our highest and best selves for our relationships, our finances, uh, and our health, obviously. So we're going to talk about the top seven what the heck just happened moments on our health journey. And I want to kick this off with number one, when Chris asked us to do this. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. What, what an amazing uh, number one what the heck just happened that we both got to experience together. And I know while we both had more or less a similar conversation, I think that that path to that conversation was a little bit different. So uh, tell us a little bit about what happened for you, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what happened to get me here. Yeah, so we were at a retreat in June, uh, about a year ago, I guess, now. And um, we had had a beautiful day of training, of uh, working on the business, had a great dinner, um, had a fun activity. And we got back to the hotel and Chris is like, okay, I'm going to get up and work out in the morning. Who's coming with me? Right. And there was a whole bunch of us standing in a circle. There must've been, I don't know, five or six of us in that circle. Right. Um, I didn't bring workout clothes, but I'm like, Chris Crone asked you to work out in the morning. You just say yes. Right. So I was like, I'm in. And, uh, I was trying to figure out like what clothes I should work out in. Like it was just a disaster. But anyway, uh, I ended up working out with Chris. Right. And, and, we got there and he started like going through his routine. Like he's like, okay, everybody jump on a machine. We're going to warm up with some cardio. And then today was, I don't remember what day it was. I feel like it was maybe like triceps or something. Cause I vaguely remember dips happening, um, which I couldn't do at the time. Um, and he, like at one point in time he walked over, like I could see him thinking and he walked over to me and he's like, Hey, he's like, how much weight do you have to lose? And I was like, ah, I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. And he's like, really, you're going to look at me in the face and tell me that you're happy where you're at. And I'm like, Fine, I probably got like, I don't know, 50 pounds to, to like lose. And he looked at me and he's like, really? And I'm like, ah, like 80, I guess 80. And he's like, be honest. I'm like, he's like, do you think you have 100 pounds to lose? I'm like, yeah, I do. I have 100 pounds I could shed. And he's like, what if I take you on a health journey? And I, just knowing what we do as a company, I'm like, this is going to be everywhere, right? <laughs> and I was a little bit, um, a little bit nervous about it. And I was like, I can't, I can't believe at six in the morning I'm having this conversation with Chris Crone about filming my entire life and putting it on the internet. Um, and so I was like, oh, all right, I guess, right? Like, I guess we can do that. A little apprehensive, right? And I, uh, I said, let me just talk with my wife because she wasn't there, right? Because Chris was like, we're going to invade your house. We're going to invade your personal life. Like, this is going to be a complete, like, scrubbing of your old life. And on the other end, spit out something cool. Yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. So I called Natalie, my wife, and I was like, hey, so I just, this was, I got back from the gym, went back to the hotel room to clean up. And I was like, so I just had this conversation with Chris. And like, I said, and before I could even say, what do you think? She's like, yep, I'm in. Like, she was so excited. Like, it was just answers to prayers for her, right? That like, somebody's going to step in and help me uh, transform my life, right? She had been trying for so long. And so now she had an ally. Um, I had been so resistant to change, right? But now all of a sudden she had this massive ally in Chris Crone who's like, we're doing this, right? Yeah. And so she was beyond excited. But I still, I went up to the room to, to Chris's suite that day for the rest of our meetings. And I could not, I just sat there. I'm like, what is happening? And I just replayed multiple ways to try to get at like, no way this is going to happen. Like, is this really going to happen? And so for me, that was like moment number one where I'm like, what, what, did, what just happened? How did I agree to this? That was like my side of it. So good. So my, my, my part picks up at the same circle in the hotel lobby where, where Chris is asking people, committing them to work out with him. And I remember it just a little bit differently because Chris is very intelligent. So he started with all the people that he knew would say yes. And at the very end were you and me, we were the last two. 
And I remember thinking like, oh, it's no problem. Like band of brothers, man. I know Casey doesn't want to go to the gym. I do not want to go to the gym either. All we got to do is stick together and we can ride this out. No problem. So Chris goes through and he gets a, yeah, of course it'll work out. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you got it. And then we get to you and you're like, yeah, I'll do it. And I just remember looking at you like, what the <laughs> heck, man? Like, be cool. All you had to do, like one time, I would have been there right with you. I lost all my chill in that moment. Oh my gosh. So of course I succumbed to the peer pressure as well that obviously you did. And I said, yep, you got it. I'll work out. So I don't ever really sleep well in hotels. And so the next morning, 545 came pretty early. My alarm goes off. And I remember thinking through my options and saying, I really want to be focused for our meetings today. And I'm not going to bring my A game if I get up right now and like I get all sweaty and extra tired. It'll be the best for my team, for the company, for everybody. If I just get a few more hours of sleep, and come back to the meetings later. That's a cute story. So I pushed snooze on the alarm, or rather I reset it for two hours later. But uh, two hours later, the alarm goes off again. I hit snooze. And then a couple of minutes later, my phone rings. And I look at my phone, and I've got the, you know, the full version picture of Chris. I can't remember what contact photo I had for him there. But Chris is on the screen calling me. And I was like, oh, 100%. There's no way I'm answering <laughs> this phone call, right? So I, I throw my phone and I hustle into the shower, took the fastest shower that I could literally check off the box that minimally met the requirements of being a shower. And then I hopped out of the shower and I text Chris back the very, very truthful statement, I just got out of the shower. Well played. I left it well for played. him to infer that I had been in the shower when he had called because of the short time frame between those two activities. But I did not lie. I had just recently gotten out of the shower. So he texted me back and said, yeah, I'd like you to join me in my private hotel suite for a chat, just the two of us, before our meetings kick off for the day. And I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> Here we go. Anyway, went up to Chris's hotel room, and then my conversation goes pretty similar, where uh, Chris asks me more or less like how I was enjoying my time with the company and if I th saw this as something that was going to be long-term or short-term. And um, yeah. He explained that he thought this was going to be a long-term thing with the two of us in this relationship and that he was worried that the choices I was making and the place I was at were going to shorten and cheapen that experience. So invited me to go on a, on a journey with my friend Casey here to figure out how to not just like lose the weight, not just the diet and the exercise stuff, but to figure out how to think differently so that we can learn how to show up as our highest and best selves. And I loved that being the theme of this, of this health journey learning how to show up as our highest and best selves. So that was for me, um, that phone call, right, that led to that conversation was the, the phone call from Chris after I told him I would go to the gym and then I skipped. That for me was the, the first moment of like, what the heck is happening here? Like Chris Crone is calling me. Yep. How about uh, next up on the list for you? Next, what the heck is happening? So, so for me, thing number, like item number two, right? Whatever you want to call it. Um, I was actually sitting in this, well, I had just gotten to work, right? Just got to work um, when, we, when Chris decided to start this journey with us, right? So we, we obviously did the thing at the hotel. We came back. We weren't quite sure when we were going to get started. Um, so I pulled up to work, and I went into my office, and Chris is like, hey, come with me. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we actually came into this room. I think I, I believe I was sitting in this chair. Um, and he had up on a screen over here in the corner, he's like, He's like, hey, so um, I wanted to show you this comment from, uh, from a YouTube video that you and I did. Uh, from a, I had helped him with a, a podcast. And we'd actually talked about kind of that concept of having it all. And we started talking a little bit about his schedule and, and health and how he operates that into his life. And uh, one of the comments on there, I don't remember the guy's name. It's probably in the episode. But it was like, oh, this guy's a, this guy's a real good example of like what health looks like, right? He said that yeah, he, uh, in the comment. In the comment. Yeah, it's, it's on the YouTube comment. I'm sure it's still there. We can go back and find the episode. And so Chris had it displayed on the screen over here. And he's like, he's like, I got to be honest, this was one of the catalysts for getting, you know, this plant of the seed in my brain. I was like, okay, yeah, cool. And like, they're filming at all different angles, right? And I'm like, so I know something's happening. And uh, we had a great conversation in here. And I was like, okay, like, I guess we're getting started, you know? And he's like, come with me. And so we walked out and we actually grabbed you. We were in the event center. We grabbed yep. you on the way by. He's like, hey, come with me. And uh, man, if I start crying, it's going to be dumb. But I walked, uh, we walked out into the ballroom. And in there was just all of our family and friends. So he had sent out a message to our wives and said, hey, invite their support system, 
right? So I go in there and there's people from the neighborhood, family, friends, um, people that are near and dear to me, right? Um, and we get on stage uh, in front of all these people and Chris talks about what the journey is going to look like. He's talking about why he wants to help us. Um, and then uh, shortly at the end of that conversation, um, after we had a chance to like break down, I think for the second or third time that day, um, Chris says, okay, we're going to weigh in. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me in front of all these people? Mm-hmm. And uh, I, that's when like I stripped down to my shirt, which I had not done in public or stripped down to my shirt, taken off my shirt, stripped down to my, you know, I just had jeans or shorts on or something. Stepped on the scale uh, in front of all of my family, all of my friends, people who love me, but I was just mortified yeah. at like at like being shirtless on the stage in front of not only my people, but your people and employees. Yep. Um, and company. so we had this entire company behind us uh, or watching this unfold. We had Ryan's family there, my family and friends. There was probably close to 100 people in the room, maybe a little less. Um, I hadn't taken my shirt off in public in probably... I don't know, 10 years. It'd yeah. been forever, right? Um, and then to all of a sudden do this and unfold in front of everybody and step on the scale and have it read over 300 pounds, I was mortified. I was like, I cannot believe that this just happened, yeah. right? Now, he, you know, it came from a very good place. Obviously, people yeah. had to know where we started. Um, I, had, I had zero concept of where I was at. I really thought I was high 200s, right? Like, I did not think I was over three bills. Um, and so for me, like as soon as I, as soon as he's like, all right, take your shirts off. I was like, that is like my, that was like thing number two for our list. But the thing number one for me was like, what the heck is happening moments. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So one that came to mind for me, kind of a, a, a critical change in my perception that, that changed everything for me and, and made me go like, what the heck is happening? Um, we had done a, an early morning workout with Chris, and in the very beginning, he was testing our resolve, and he was having us come up at 4 a.m. Yeah, that was and early. Both of us have quite a drive to his place, so we're up at 3 o'clock in the morning, a little bit I before. I don't leave my house by 3. Yeah, to get there. So super tired, exhausted anyway, because it's 4 o'clock in the morning, and we had done a workout, and then Chris went to like Mexico, and so he wasn't there the next workout. So we worked out with his good friend and our good friend, Trent, right. uh, who put us through the paces. And Trent had put me through a cardio um, regimen for that day that was in- incredibly strenuous. And I just remember being so proud when Chris got back that I was going like, to hop on that treadmill and do this, like, really hard, uh, this really hard workout. So we, we get going, and I hop on the treadmill, and I click all the buttons – for this to do the same workout that Trent had put me through. And Chris walks over to me because I had like started my own thing. And he walks over and basically says, like, what are you doing? And like with I mean, just so much pride. I was like, yeah. So I start on I, whatever it was. I start on a two and then every minute I go up in speed and incline, you know, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and so Chris, uh, Chris is like like basically like, oh that's really cute. So like what did you end at? Like after this really hard cardio workout. And I was like, I was at an incline of 12 on like 3.1. <laughs> so proud. So much pride. And he was like, okay, that's cute. So go ahead and take it to 12 and 3.2. We're going to do all of our cardio now at the very top of that, of that workout. And I'm sure that there's, a, that there's a double take on camera. Like, what? Like, that's not even physically possible. Like, I can't. I, can, I got there. I, I can't start there. Yeah. And so we put it at that speed and he went through and, and we did a, a breakthrough and we got done with that breakthrough, which was very powerful. And I'm screaming and I'm sure I'm crying and I'm sure there's <laughs> snot in my beard and everything. And, but I got done with that, with that breakthrough and he hops off and he comes over and he pats me on the back, <laughs> pats me on the back. We're okay. We're sound good. Effects. Ryan's throwing his phone. Uh, he comes over and pats me on the back and he points at the, at the monitor and I was at 35 minutes on that machine doing the faster speed that I'd only done for one or two minutes previously and that I had defined as impossible. Yeah. And he patted me on the back and said, like, you know, you got four more minutes to round out your, whatever it was, 40 minutes of cardio, like, good job. And that was a moment for me that was like, what the heck is happening? Like, how is it possible that I was able to do something that big for that long uh, where I was at and really shifted how I looked at everything. So for me, that's number one on my list. Okay. I like it. So for me, number two, um, we were probably a month into our journey and, uh, our CEO whom I love walked into our office with Chris 
And Chris had banned at this point in the ballgame a lot of things from our lives, right? Like we were 1,500 calories, very clean, but he hadn't said anything about diet or zero sugar soda. We have, so, we have recorded that he had not said that. No, yeah, he hadn't meeting. said anything about it, right? Didn't, yeah. didn't really uh, like breach like drinks, right? Um, I think he just assumed we were smart enough to know not to drink soda, but he didn't know that I wasn't smart enough not to drink diet soda. <laughs> well, I was right um, there with you. And so I had built up this cool like reserve of stuff next to my desk, right? And I wasn't trying to hide it. It was out in the open. It just was like he never like looked down when he walked past my desk. Um, and so anyway, they walked in. Our CEO lovingly points it out. And he's like, is that okay? And Chris is like, let me see that right now. And he, uh, so I put him up on the desk. I had like three 12 packs, basically. It's like the tall skid, like fridge skinny ones. Yeah. And so they didn't take up a bunch of space, but I put him on, I put him on the desk. Um, and at this point in time, what I, what I, like, I know what's happening, right? I'm like, I'm losing <laughs> one of the last things that is keeping me sane, right? And so I'm already very physically charged and like emotionally charged watching this go down. Um, and Chris uh, proceeded to be like, yep, this is no longer a thing. Got after me just a little bit and then proceeded to like drop all the soda on the ground. And there was like massive soda explosions. It drops like, a little bit underselling yeah, the yeah, emphasis. I'm, did that. he throw it? I don't remember. I was so physically charged at that point in the ball game. That I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And that was like one of the first times in this journey that I like, I legit had to go cool off. I'm sure it made our directors like, this was like ad hoc. So they weren't there. But Carson was filming it on his phone because he thought the whole thing was funny. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, like watching Carson. something like being ripped away from me that I was hanging on to near and dear. And like when that hit the floor and like soda shot everywhere, I was like, are you freaking kidding me? And so like for me, like that was like number two where I'm like the last little thing that I have that's like giving me sanity in this journey is being yanked away yeah. and thrown on the ground and Goodbye. exploding I'm like, what the heck just happened? Matter of fact, I was so heated, I got up and like left. Yeah, I, I left that. for like, I went on a drive for like a half hour because I was just fit to be tied. Now it sounds ridiculous now looking back that I was so upset over soda. Um, but at the spot we were at the time and like the, the lack of control like I thought I had in my life, that was really meaningful. So like, that was one of the first times where I'm like, I'm, what I actually realized is like, I'm kicking an addiction, right? Like I was 100% addicted to soda, no doubt about it. And yeah. so like, it was like, it was a really rough moment for me, but that was definitely a, like, what the heck just happened moment. Yeah. Amazing. So next one that pops up for me, I got a text message. I get lots of messages from Chris. The ones that I've learned to view a little differently are the, are the text messages that I'll get that include the director of our series, the camera guy, right? Yes. Those are the ones where you are like, what, what is happening? What right. is about to happen? So I got a text message one day inviting myself and our video crew to meet at an address. It was like, show up at this address. Um, like on, it was like a Tuesday at 10 a.m. So I pull up to that address on Tuesday at 10 a.m. And we're in front of a salon. Okay. Barbershop. And I, and I vaguely recalled a couple of weird conversations that I'd had with Chris where in, in the middle of a workout, he'd kept come up to me and just looked at me for a few seconds, like five seconds in a five second stare from Chris is like a thousand years. Like, yeah, forever. Time. And just is like staring at me and he goes, how attached are you to that beard? <laughs> so all of a sudden we're in, the, we're in front of a salon and I'm vaguely recalling that. And I'm remembering the joke that I made as a nervous reaction to that question. And I said something to him like, Oh, I don't know. I think I'm, I mean, I'm like medium attached. It does a, it does a great job of hiding my double chin. I made a little joke. Yeah. at my own expense about hiding behind that beard. And it turns out Chris had latched hold of that idea. And fast forward like six weeks later, we're sitting in front of a salon and uh, we went through a breakthrough that was all about hiding and all the places that I was hiding just behaviors and thoughts and a uh, really powerful breakthrough that um, I think legitimately left a piece of me in that barber chair but for me, the, my next like what the heck is happening moment is as Chris is handing me the clippers and inviting me to stop hiding and to shave that beard and just taking that thing and going diagonal over my face I so there was no possible that. way to salvage that jungle beard and uh, trimmed that thing off and left a whole bunch of stuff in that, in that barbershop and left saying like, what is happening? For me, that was number two. Yeah, I just watched that TikTok. It was oh, beautiful. Yeah? Made me cry. Broke me down in Ooh. my office. I'm in my office crying. It was ridiculous. It was powerful. Um, so, like, I think my third one, right? Because we promised seven. So, my third one, um, 
was perhaps one of the most interesting experiences I've ever had in my entire adult life. So I was in the middle of a particularly tricky breakthrough, um, very emotionally charged. Um, we were mid cardio like we normally were, right? And Chris actually like yanked me off the machine. He's like, get off this thing right now. Come over with me. And we, uh, we ended up going over to these massive mirrors uh, in, the, in the gym that he has there at the clubhouse. And we, uh, he was working me through a breakthrough and I was yelling and crying at myself in the mirror and it was very emotionally charged. Um, and, and Chris knew there was something I still wasn't getting to. I still had things. I was like only partially cleaning out this massive gaping hole of a wound that I hadn't completely taken care of, right? He knew there was still debris in there that had to be taken care of. And at one point in time, he turns around, takes my glasses and slaps me on Ooh, the face. Not, I've seen that TikTok. Not once, but twice. Not love taps. Yeah. Not like, how you doing, buddy? Like, slapped me in the face. And I was like, what just happened? Um, and uh, I say that now, and people have probably seen the episode, and I don't even know, I, I don't watch the full-length episode, so I don't know the reaction to that. Um, but I will tell you to this day that, that uh, some people may look at that as like degrading or demeaning, right, to do that to another man. But that was one of the biggest wake-up calls I've ever had that I absolutely needed. Somebody to like grab a hold of me that knew there was more in there, that knew that there was things that needed to be cleaned out and rectified for me to move forward and take that drastic approach to make that happen. Yeah. But <laughs> having, having said that, it still was a moment that I'm like, what just happened? Yeah. Um, and so for me, very meaningful, very impactful, but uh, definitely something that I will probably never forget for the entire rest of my life, being slapped by another grown man, let alone a multimillionaire, soon to be billionaire. Amazing. Ooh. For me, number three um, was in the chair right next to you there. We were filming an episode. I think they ended up calling it like Bedroom Talk. Ooh. It was our um, our spicy podcast. Yeah. And um, Chris asked a question, and I don't remember exactly what that was or what my response was, but the response that I gave uh, included some self-deprecating humor. I cracked a, a joke at my own expense to try to get you and Chris to laugh. Probably worked. I think you laughed. I probably did. Chris ended up getting pretty pissed. And he basically shut down that whole conversation, but right? He had a place that he wanted to go and my little joke shut down everything. And, and he went on a little rant, um, a very loving rant for a couple of minutes where he explained, um, an idea that I've heard, I've heard before many times, but I understood completely differently. And it was this idea that the worth of souls is great in the sight of God. And there, there is no variable. His little rant was about the fact that there's no variable in this equation. This is my paraphrasing of it, but this is, this is literally the worth of your soul, your worth, and then an equal sign, and then great. And there's nothing, no variable that you can put anywhere in there that changes that math. And uh, the way that he described that and... Um, the, the passion that he committed me to never ever use self-deprecating humor again to make jokes, to make other people feel happy, right? At the expense of me uh, feeling sad, which is inside what, what all of those have. Um, yeah, that, that, uh, that shook me. And what was really fascinating is that as we walked out of the I was at the studio here. The, the conversation wrapped up and we, we talked about something else. But as I walked out of the studio here, um, I, I understood completely differently for the first time um, that Chris absolutely, first of all, cared about me. And second of all, he knew I was going to lose 100 pounds. He knew it. And I had this light bulb go off that was this realization that Chris always gets what he wants. He always gets what he wants. And he absolutely believed that I was going to lose 100 pounds. And to that point, I don't know if I had believed it. I knew that I was going to show up. I knew that I was going to try hard. Those things were a given. But whether or not I'd actually get to that finish line, I, like I didn't know that. How could you know that? But I realized um, after that conversation and, and the passion that he had in explaining that concept to me that he absolutely believed it. And then all of a sudden, something switched in my mind and then I believed it too. And then I knew it in a different way. And it changed uh, so many decisions for me. Instead of 
trying to figure out like how I was going to do things. Instead, I was just thinking of like, what are the things that I've already done? Because I've already lost 100 pounds. Like I believe it in the same, the same way as if it was in the past. So what were the things that I, that I did that, that helped me get there? And food choices became easier. Pushing harder at the gym became easier. Like goals became like more focused for me all as a result of that conversation. But um, the fact that somebody like Chris would care to just shut down that thing, he, he, he goes off about uh, how words have power and that he wasn't going to basically let me put that into the universe. But that somebody would do something like that, um, that would care at that level, it completely shifted so many things for me and, and really uh, was, was one of the hugest moments in the in this experience where I really had to stop and ask myself that that question like what is happening something is happening so pretty amazing Love amazing it. did you do three I did three I did three you and did then we three. did one three that's three. it I think that's seven we have we, accomplished we, we delivered mission. we delivered seven what the heck is happening moments for Casey and I on the health journey figuring out how to retool some things up here and trekking towards losing 100 pounds each. It's been great to be with you. We hope you enjoyed story time. I think we both did. And uh, we appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one.